CBS Radio brings you The Couple Next Door, written by Peg Lynch and starring Peg Lynch and Alan Bunce. Dear, where are you? Did you call me? Yeah, I'm in the living room. Oh, hi. Hi, did you call me, dear? Yeah, I called you. I buzzed you. I pounded on the floor. I thought I heard you. What'd you want? What are you doing? Oh, what do you mean, what am I doing, dear? I mean, well, what are you I'm... doing? I'm busy. We're having a committee meeting. My goodness, it certainly was a wonderful idea turning our pine panel basement into the committee headquarters, not having all the mess up here in the living room. I don't know why I didn't think of it to begin with, because it's just perfect, you know. Well, what did you want, dear? Oh, nothing. I just wondered what you were doing. Oh, <laughs> dear. And one of the reasons I set up everything in the basement was so we wouldn't disturb you up here and you could just rest this week, do what the doctor said now, dear. You I'm know. tired of resting. Oh. And I, I, my back is much better. Yeah, much want, better. You want me to think up something interesting for you to do? Yeah. All right. Why don't you clean out your desk? Oh, <laughs> no. Look, you never want me to touch it and it's a mess. You, now, you're always saying you'll do it when you have time. So, now you have time. <laughs> you go on back to your committee. Go on, go on, go on. <laughs> you may find all sorts of interesting things, like your cigarette lighter, dear. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll clean out my desk. Paris, European capital of fashion and femininity, where women are dedicated to being desirable and appealing. Paris, where the preferred deodorant among knowing women is new Odorono. Parisians have discovered that wonderful new Odorono forms a gentle, firm shield against odor-causing perspiration. Gives you a clean, fresh feeling all day long. Odorono babies the skin, so mild it can't harm the finest fabric. And now, important news. To introduce you to Paris's favorite deodorant, New Odorolo is being offered at just half price. For a limited time only, save 50 cents on the $1 jar of Odorolo cream. Or get new Odorolo spray, also at half price. Look for the Odorolo half price offer wherever deodorants are sold. What is it now? Oh, come here. Come here. Come here. Mabel said, I think I hear your husband pounding on the floor for you again. Yeah, well, so, uh... certainly was. You were certainly right that if I cleaned out my desk, I'd find all sorts of interesting things. Look at this. What? What? Look at it. Look. Look at it. I think it's a letter of some kind. I can't read a thing. You just keep waggling it under my nose. Hold your hand still. It's You're okay. darn right it's a letter. It's from the Internal Revenue Department. It isn't even opened. What? When did this come? I don't know. I don't even know what it is. You, with your passion for just swooping things off the desk, you, you probably just jammed it in a drawer, and you hadn't looked at it. Here I, here I am. And... Don't get so excited. Don't get so excited. Look, when I get a letter from the income tax department, I'd like to know about it. Well, you it. have plenty of time. It isn't April 15th yet. Probably just some blank forms. Why don't you open I it? I am. I am opening it. I want to prove to you that you apparently shoved it into a desk drawer with this passion you have for cleaning things up. I would appreciate it if you would just stop being so darn anxious to... What's the matter? What does it say? Oh, my gosh. What? Tax inspector wants to uh, look over my 1958 tax returns. You mean you're... you're being checked? Yes. Paid your tax, didn't you? Oh, yes. You sure you mailed it? Oh, certainly. Well, I wonder why they're checking you. Yeah, well, I mean, I suppose it's just... You know, just routine. Uh-huh, sure. You uh, think maybe we put down too much for charity? No, no, no. I, I give to charity. I mean, you're allowed to claim so much. Yeah, I know, but I mean, do you think we... Maybe we stretched it a little? No, no. Look, I was perfectly honest about everything. Then what are you worried about? I'm not worried. You think maybe you took off too much, you know, for business expenses, entertaining and all that? Oh, no, no. Now, look, at this is just a routine check. Well, there must be something they're questioning, dear. Yeah, well, he's probably going to question why I got this letter three weeks ago and didn't even call him. Honestly, you, with this, this mania you have for swooping things off the desk and jamming them into a drawer, 
Well, I'm sorry. I'm sure you're right. I, I'm sure it's my fault, but I don't even remember seeing the envelope, dear. I don't, I don't even remember seeing it when I brought in the mail. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, just... all right, all right. I better call him, I guess. That's what it says here. Call and make an appointment. Uh-huh. For when it would be convenient for us to get together to, to go over it. What's his name? Uh, Fletcher. Dawson J. Fletcher. Goodness, look at the way he signs his name. Certainly a positive person, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are you nervous about, dear? But You've always been perfectly honest about filling out your income tax, haven't you? Yes. Well, I certainly tried to be, but, I mean, as you say, there, there must be something there questioning. I I certainly don't know what the heck it could be, but I... I... Well, honey, as you said, it probably is just routine, you yeah, know. Yeah, sure. yeah. Well, I, I better call him... Want me to look up the phone number for you, dear? Huh? No, no, no. It's right here on the letter. Oh, oh, is it? Yeah. Put the blame on me, dear. Say, you know, that your wife put the letter in the desk, you know, and you just happen to find it now. <laughs> Maybe you'd be, be kind of amusing telling about it, you know? Yeah. Well, let me see. It's uh, Main 3409. Oh, Main 3. Maybe you could be kind of funny about how... How I'm always swooping things in desk drawers, you know. <laughs> and, you know, putting your things away before you get a chance to see them. <laughs> you know? Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. I mean, I, I don't mind if you if you want to make a little crack about how women are, you know. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah, know. I know. Uh-huh. Hello, hello. Oh, good morning. <laughs> My name is Piper, and I uh, seems I, I got a letter three weeks ago from your department. It seems to have gotten misplaced, and I just found it here. And tell, I, I, tell him it was my fault. And, yes, I... I all right. Fletcher. What did he say? Girl on the switchboard. Oh. oh. Be sure and tell him it was my fault now, you know. You oh, talk to yeah, him. I, you know. I, uh, hello? hello? Oh, hello, sir. I, uh, I I seem to have misplaced a letter here from you people for about three weeks ago, apparently, about a tax inspection. Tell him it was my fault. Piper. Piper. 13, Rainbow Lake. Rainbow Lake. Yes, sir. That's right. Yes, thank you. He's going to look up the letter. Uh huh. Golly, what if he wants me to come down to the tax office today? I mean, what if he wants me? You're not going. You can't go. You know what the doctor said. Tell this man you've been laid up with a bad back. Tell him to come out to the house. Oh, I don't know if they do that. Well, you better act as though you're willing to see him as soon as possible. I mean, not having answered his letter for three weeks, if you. You know, dear, if you put the man off, maybe he'll think that you're, well, you know, that you're, well, fixing your books. Oh, for Pete's sake. I... Well, tell him any time is all right so he doesn't think something is crooked. I know, oh, crooked. What is the matter with you? Why don't you ask him out to the house for dinner? You want to? Oh, dinner, no. You... I could make a cake. Oh. My devil's food that everybody just loves. I bet the tax man would just love Why it. should we ask the tax inspector to dinner and bake him a cake for Pete's sake? Don't you think that would look funny? Oh, well, yes. yes. Hello! Yeah. Yes, sir? Yes. Yes, that's right. Uh, yes, I, I realize that. Well, uh, the truth is I've been laid up with a bad back... with a bad back for a couple of weeks, and I, I'm supposed to go back to work. Uh, I mean, I'm not supposed to go back until the doctor tells me. Yes. Oh, that, that, that'd be fine. I didn't know... You... Certainly. Ah, uh, well, you see, you see what happened, sir. This, the letter was misplaced, and I... Yes, all right, sir. Goodbye. <coughs> he'll, uh, he'll, he'll come out to the house, he says, next week. Wednesday oh, evening. Okay. Wednesday he's coming out. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to have all my canceled checks yeah. and my check stubs and sales slips, uh-huh. every, everything for 1958. Oh, my God. You know, heavens. ready for... Yeah. Where yeah. are oh, they? My, don't... In the attic, I suppose. How did he sound? Nice? Or like the district attorney in a murder case? Oh, Look, he was just businesslike, uh-huh. which is what he should be. I mean, sure. after all. But Pete takes this is just routine. Uh-huh. Yes. Well, just the same. Let's go to the attic and start looking. We'll return to the couple next door in just a moment. The Red Cross means different things to different people. To the family left homeless by a fire, flood, or tornado, 
The Red Cross means food, clothing, and shelter, perhaps even a gift of money. To a serviceman overseas or a veteran in a hospital, the Red Cross may mean a friendly reminder of home or a few moments of care-chasing entertainment. To someone seriously injured or undergoing an operation, the Red Cross means a ready supply of life-saving blood. To the swimmer, the Red Cross means greater water safety. And to a refugee or political prisoner in a foreign land, the Red Cross means help from a friendly hand that reaches across borders and through barbed wire. All the good things that happen to people through the efforts of the Red Cross happen because many people have given generously of their money and of their volunteer services. Make more good things happen to more people through the Red Cross by giving and serving. Stop shoving the boxes around any old way. I try to keep some system in this attic. Uh, Anyhow, you're not supposed to be lifting anything. Let me do the looking now. Yeah, all right, okay, okay. Now, here's the account book for 1958. I can't find the canceled checks. You know, it makes me kind of mad, the government wanting to know way back to 58. Yeah, well, look, it's the law. Well, if they want to know about 1958, why don't they come around in 1958 instead of waiting until I have things nicely sorted and put away? So we have to prowl all around the attic, digging into everything. Makes me so Yoo-hoo! mad. Oh, Mabel, Who's that you? I'm in the attic. Come on up. Watch your step. I'm say I forgot about my committee meeting going on down the basement. Watch your step, Mabel. Don't bump your head on the beam either. Well, we're <laughs> ready to vote on my resolution, and I thought you ought to be there. Yes, I suppose. Hello. How's your back? Oh, it's much better, much better, thank yeah, you. I'll be right down, Mabel. We're looking for canceled checks and stubs and all our records for 1958. He's being checked. He's being what? Checked. Income tax for 1958. Tax inspector's coming out next week. Oh, my goodness. Well, this is just a routine check, Mabel. Uh-huh. Sure, sure. I, I mean, it, it could happen to anybody. Yes, of course. Sure. That kind of thing. I mean, there's nothing to worry about. I've <clears throat> certainly always been honest about filling out my income tax. Oh, I'm sure you have. I've heard they do make routine checks, just picking people at random, but... Mm-hmm. Well, we've never been checked, and I don't think I've ever known anybody personally, you know, that was. Oh, well, I'm sure everything's all right, but my goodness, doesn't it give you a funny feeling to think that the government is after you? Oh, look, the government is not after me, for Pete's sake. Come on, Mabel, let, let's go on down. Watch, watch your step. Well, now, maybe Mabel, he please. put down too much for business entertainment. Well, and I... I hear they're really clamping down on that now. Uh-huh. And church... Well, our minister said he wished the church had all the money that people claim they put into the collection plate. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Go on down, Mabel. Well, Go well, on. Anyhow, good luck. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. Stop uh, worrying. Uh, stop worrying. As Mabel said, they probably pick names at random. Now, stop worrying. Yeah, here. sure, at random. And with my usual luck, they had to pick mine. <laughs> The Couple Next Door stars Peg Lynch and Alan Bunce with Beatrice Pons and is produced by Walter Hart and directed by Dick Stenter. This is Stuart Metz speaking. <laughs>